The great preacher Charles Haddon Spurgeon says that the doctrine of covenant lies at the root of all true theology. And so he who understands it is a master of divinity. That was Spurgeon's opinion. Problem, however, with covenant theology is that it's something that we often discuss, but rarely define. So when we're thinking about covenant theology, it's helpful to take a step back and for us to define our terms, just to think about the basic nuts and bolts of covenant theology. And here, like most things, we just need to define our terms. And a little bit of language knowledge goes a long way. So let me give you just four terms that really define covenant theology. The first is a Hebrew term. It's called berit, which simply means to cut a covenant. And it speaks to the fact that in the ancient world, uh, covenants were often confirmed through blood sacrifice. And so one biblical scholar, O. Palmer Robertson, very famously defined a covenant as a bond in blood sovereignly administered. And the classic case of this is found in Genesis 15, where God ratifies or confirms his covenant with Abraham through a sacrifice. So the first term is berit. It refers to the fact that God cuts a covenant or confirms a covenant through sacrifice. The second term is a Greek one. It's diatheke. It basically means a uh, pact or an agreement, a testament, a last will that someone might draw up for the benefit of their heirs. And if you've ever had a uh, last will and testament draw up, you understand that the benefits of your state are given to your heirs upon your death. Well, throughout the Bible, we understand that the benefits of the covenant are secured for us through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the book of Hebrews uses this word diatheke to help us understand that a testament is basically uh, pointing to the fact that God's covenant is secure through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we have an Old Testament and a New Testament. The next term is the term foitus. It's a Latin term. We use this when we talk about the federal government. A federal government is one where a representative represents or speaks on behalf of the people. Well, covenant theology is sometimes called federal theology. It's a relationship through representation. And when you actually read the Bible, there are two covenants and two representatives. Adam represents the covenant of works. Christ represents the covenant of grace. So covenant theology is a theology or a relationship through representation. The last word, pactum, very similar to foetus, a Latin term that basically points to the fact the members of the Godhead entered into an eternal pact to secure our salvation. So all of these terms point to the fact that covenant is at the heart of the Bible. As John Owen famously said, all theology is founded on covenant.